So today I'm going to get you up and running with Nintendo Switch through Retrobat. So it's a system that Retrobat uses, which I've been put off because technically it's not classed as retro at the moment as it's not 15 years old. But I've had so many people ask me to do a setup guide. Now, luckily, my partner has bought a Nintendo Switch about a year ago, and she's got a few games on it. And one of those games I'm going to test out is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And um, yeah, that's a really great game. So in this setup guide, I'm going to go through the whole process with you, which files you need to get your games running, which is Yuzu. I'm also going to be suggesting what video settings work best in this after spending the last few hours setting this up for myself and see how well this performs. So if you want Nintendo Switch through Retrobat, this is your video, so check this one out. Okay then, so first things first, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, hit the notification, subscribe and also like it gets you the latest Retrobat content as I upload it, as well as other retro related emulation videos such as Launchbox, Retroarch, Batacera and beyond, even Raspberry Pi nowadays. So we're going to start off today with Yuzu. Now Yuzu is obviously a Nintendo Switch emulator which has gained a lot of popularity and the reason a lot of people want to emulate Nintendo Switch is partly uh, due to better resolutions. The original Nintendo Switch only goes up to around 1080p, 720p to 1080p. Now, if you've got a powerful computer and you've got a good CPU and a good GPU, we can push this up to 4K in some cases. And obviously, people like myself love the idea of having high resolution on games which aren't technically supported. So we're going to start off with Yuzu on this, and what we're going to do first is go straight into Retrobat. And once we're inside Retrobat, you're going to find Retrobat itself. This is a little logo. So if we just go inside of here, uh, your theme might look a lot different to this one. It likely does. But what we're going to do is just scroll down and we're going to go for Yuzu first. And Yuzu is going to be around the bottom. Now, you've got two options for Yuzu. You can pay uh, for early access, which entitles you to all the latest updates by Yuzu. And uh, the team behind Yuzu are very active always pushing out updates to make the emulator so much better. But I don't have that. Uh, I'm going to just use the standard Yuzu switch. So I'm going to just open this one. And it says an emulator is missing. So what we need to do then is actually download this one manually without Retrobat. So we're going to main menu, quit. And the link's going to be in my description for this one, but this is the Yuzu official website. And what we're going to do is download the emulator itself. And it's also suggesting that you download the latest version of Visual C++. So let's just go through that a second. So we're just going to click on here. And once that's downloaded, you're going to get a little .exe. If we open this and just install it, uh, you'll likely see install is a tab on yours. I've already got this. Uh, I'm, I'm limited with options here. Like I said, this is installed on my computer. Uh, but if you don't have it, just press install. I'm going to just press repair. And once you have installed it, it will likely say restart your computer. So if that's the case, restart your computer. OK, so we're back to Yuzu. And before I actually go through with downloading this, we got a compatibility tab here. And we got a little legend at the top where it's saying that the blue is perfect. So games below in blue perfect are going to be running 100%. And there's a lot there. And the next thing we got great. Now, this isn't going to be completely 100%. There's going to be glitches and so on. But largely, your games are going to be likely quite playable. Uh, OK, bad intro, won't boot, not tested. It's kind of just forget. But like I said, the Yuzu team are very active. So let's just download this. So go to the download tab in downloads for Windows times 64. And we got the Yuzu installed just here. And what we need to do is actually 
install this into the RetroBat emulators directory. Okay then, so once we've downloaded the Yuzu installer, you're going to have an XE. Just double left click on this XE and just make sure Yuzu is checked. Or if you prefer to go for the paid Yuzu early access, just check on this one but you're going to need a token and that requires you go into their patreon so i'm going to just leave this one to yuzu and i'm also going to create a shortcut for this and i'm going to go to install now right now this is actually installing to our c drive so once we've done this, we can get rid of this install.exe. We no longer need this one. So, okay, so once the install process is done, we're going to need to copy some of the contents of what Yuzu is just installed on your computer into Retrobat. So I'm going to open up Yuzu. And okay, this for now. And if I go to File, Open Yuzu folder, and this is where everything is installed to. So what I'm going to do is just go up to the search bar just here. And if I delete Yuzu and Roman and just go down to local. And if I go down to the bottom, we're going to find Yuzu. And we're going to go into Yuzu Windows MSVC. And I'm going to press control on my keyboard and A. And this is going to highlight everything. Right click and left click on copy. Okay, so once you've copied all of those files, we're just going to go back to the RetroBat Emulators Yuzu folder and just paste these inside. Uh, whilst we're in the RetroBat directory, we're going to go to the RetroBat ROMs directory. And if I just scroll down and find Switch, here we go. So I'm going to tell you now about file extensions. So the best way to find out which uh, game file extensions RetroBat or Yuzu accepts is just go into the RetroBat open file location, uh, back to UI and system list. And I'm going to scroll down to system and just look for switch. Now, if you don't see what I see just here, uh, there's a good chance that you haven't installed RetroBat correctly, and I recommend you checking out my fully uh, up-to-date comprehensive guide for the latest RetroBat to get you started with that. So we're going to find Switch, and it accepts .nso, .nro, .nca, .xci, .nsp, .kip. So let's close out of here. And what I'm going to do now is just go back to my RetroBat ROM Switch directory, uh, and I'm going to drag my game in. So I've got Super Mario 3D World, courtesy of my partner or fiance. And I'm going to just drag and drop this one in. So what we did just a minute ago when we copied all of those files from app data is that it didn't generate it what's called a user folder. And we need this in order to put some extra files in. So to get this folder up here, we're going to open up RetroBat again. <laughs> And to get that folder to appear, what we're going to do is just quickly boot up our Super Mario 3D World game. And it's going to say that keys aren't there, which is fine. We need this. So we're going to OK this and no, just close that Abuzu and OK. Close again. And let's shut down RetroBat. So main menu, quit. Now, if we go back into the emulators folder in the RetroBat directory and just scroll down till we get to Yuzu, you will find we have now got user in there and that's what we need. Inside user, we got several different folders. The one to look for is keys. Now I've got a couple of files here, what we need to make our Switch games run. We've got prods.keys and title.keys. I'm gonna just drag and drop these inside of that Yuzu user keys folder in RetroBat emulators. And I'm gonna to go to RetroBat once again. And before we boot up the game, I'm going to just quickly grab some artwork. So main menu, scraper, scrape now. I just give that a few seconds. That's going to download us some artwork and a preview video, which always adds to the look. So once this is finished scraping, just head up the game settings, update game list and press on yes. 
And here we go. So we've got cover art for our game. Okay, and as we can see, that's working fine. Now, you might notice in some Switch games for a Yuzu that it might lag. And what it's doing, it's building what's known as shaders. And once you play a game a few times, those shaders will be loaded into your cache folder. And you'll no longer then see lag as much. So just be aware, again, that you will need something strong to power Yuzu and play the games. So next thing I'm going to show you to do finally is how to add updates and DLC for your Switch game. So to do this, we're going to main menu, quit, and we're going to go back to the retro bat directory again. So open file location, and if we go down to emulators, and we look for Yuzu, and we can open up yuzu.exe here, and this is how you can install your updates and DLC. So from here, what we need to do is just go into file and install files to NAND. And then it's just a simple case of locating your DLC file or your update file. Just double left clicking on it and then that will install to NAND. Now let's go back to Retrobat and I'm going to show you through some video settings. <laughs> Okay, so let's go inside Nintendo Switch. If I go to view options by pressing select on my PS3 controller, I find system options. So if we select one of these other ones, which I've not done yet, Yuzu. Now internal resolution, like I say, the great thing about playing Switch games through emulation is the ability to really upscale this. Uh, like I said at the start of the video for K, that type of thing but just be very aware if you don't have the hardware it's not going to happen or if it does happen it's going to be very slow so just be aware of that but obviously the higher up you go the more stress it's going to put on your hardware vertical sync should always be put on to yes that's going to reduce potential screen tear now game aspect ratio switch games are designed for 16 by 9 so just leave this one on to auto which is going to detect that one under auto configure controllers, I recommend this one always being put to on. And if we go down to visual rendering, we've got a set of options here. So anti-aliasing is obviously going to be used for filtering and creating a bit of a blur on jagged edges. Scaling filter. Normally, I suggest going for something like bilinear on this, but that's entirely up to you. Or if you've got an AMD GPU, then it's worth going down to AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which might make your games look better. I don't have an AMD, I've got NVIDIA. And anastrophic filtering, this is going to really enhance the quality of textures you see in your game. So just like internal resolution, the higher up you go with this, the more laggy your game potentially might become. So just be aware of this one. And if we go down to drivers and go to video, uh, some games which should be loading and you find don't load, uh, by auto, this is using OpenGL, which is obviously NVIDIA related. 
Uh, it's worth going to Vault Hunt in case of some games not working. And if we go right down to controls, under player one controller type, we got a selection of different Switch controllers that we can emulate. So that's it for today's setup guide through Retrobat and Yuzu. I hope I've got some of you very happy today by doing this video. Like I said, it wasn't intentional that I was aiming to set out to do this video, but due to people going on at me in the past over and over, I've decided let's just give you what you want. So this is it. And if you're new to my channel, please make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like. It gets you up to date Retrobat content and beyond as I release it. And also be sure to check out my membership option. If there is a setup guide that you want done and I've not covered it, it could be anything really, anything technical. Just make sure you hit the next level option where your tier is going to include a setup guide by myself done personally. But until next time, stay retro.